I wanted to show you my water column manometer. Um, some of these manometers also use mercury for reading higher pressures, but the water column manometers are used for reading very, very low pressure. They have a, a high resolution and are very sensitive. I built this a couple years ago when I was installing a furnace, and I thought I was only going to use it once, so I didn't want to go out and buy a uh, you know an expensive water gauge just for one installation but I've ended up using it since a couple times so uh, this is a handy little tool you don't use it all the time but it's really nice to have when you do need it uh, the thing I'm going to use it for now is measuring static pressure inside my sandblasting cabinet so whenever I go to upgrade my system with a with a different uh, fan unit I can match the pressure because what I have right now works really well. Uh, I'm just gonna change it out because I need something more permanent and not quite as loud. Right now I'm using the shop vac. These things are, are nice because you can, I, there's two ports on here you can see. I haven't used the one port yet. But the one port can be um, teed into a system at right angle, say a, uh, a, um, a dust collection duct at right angles and then this other end can be hooked to a pitot tube that goes inside the duct and actually um, the pitot tube actually collects air as it's moving so what you're going to get, you're going to get two different pressures, you're going to get static and you're, you're going to get dynamic pressure and when you subtract the two you come out with your velocity pressure and that's really important for balancing a uh, dust collection system I haven't made it that far yet, but what I'm just going to do right now, and I think this will be sufficient for the small setup I have, is I'm going to be putting this in my in an entrance duct right here. You can see it in my. Uh, this is a vent vent duct. It's kind of tough to see it because I have all kinds of junk in the way here, but that's a vent into my sandblasting cabinet, and I'm going to put. The, um, the static pressure tube inside there and take a reading and then I'll know how much airflow I need for this particular cabinet. When I put this in here the way these work is there'll be you see these two water tops of these water columns this one's going to rise up under vacuum this one's going to lower you take the distance between the two and that's your total water column and you do a conversion over to PSI okay um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn on the shop vac I'm gonna stick this into the cabinet in that inlet port and take a reading it's gonna be very slight but then I'm gonna do the conversion to PSI uh, you won't, I can't talk while this thing is running so, because it's so incredibly loud but you'll be able to see it on camera whenever I put that into that port. You see the water columns right here, there, right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a 12 inch scale up here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the system on, the, the vacuum cleaner, or, or the shop vac on rather, uh, and then put that in the port and we'll take a measurement. As you can see on the on the video, the water column moves slightly whenever I put the the tube into the vacuum port. It's very very slight, so I kind of I put it in the vacuum or the the inlet port and then took it out a few times just to so you could see the water how it fluctuated. Uh, I know it's a little bit tough to see, uh, but I was getting a reading. Um, I moved the, the scale there, 
to get a, in a line right on four inches and then I went across the other side and, and got a corresponding line to get the total water column and I come up with the best I could at 0.35 inches. Now I did the conversion on that and it comes out to 0 0.013 pounds per square inch. So that's an extremely small amount of uh, uh, negative pressure I'm getting but that just, that just shows you how sensitive these things are. When you're testing a furnace a lot of the pressure switches, the safety switches that they put in these new high efficiency furnaces are rated at um, like anywhere between 0.75 and 0.8 I think 0.82 inches of water column which is, a, I didn't do the conversion of PSI but it's a very very small amount and the reason for that is whenever uh, you're dealing with a, a combustion chamber of a furnace they want to make sure that there's no blockages uh, to vents and they want to make sure there's not a situation where uh, combustion gases leak into the home or it also can signify a, a leak in the um, in the heat exchanger and that's another big that's another bad thing with an older furnace sometimes they fracture they, they crack from heating and cooling cycles and that can be a dangerous situation so you need something really really sensitive to detect that and the those those gauges aren't they're not water gauges but they're little diaphragm gauges and they're very very sensitive to small pressures but it's nice when you're testing something like that to have a gauge like this it's a very very simple construction I'll show you how it, it's made um, this is a this is well you obviously you can see it's a piece of wood but if you look here it's a it's a, it's a one by four and there's a, a one by four and then the top I took a um, another one by four and just ripped it down on the table saw. See how thin strip there? Ripped it down to make it a lot thinner piece to laminate over the top of this. Now this kind of looks like it's routed but what I actually did is I took this uh, 3 8 by three and a half inch board and laid down a pattern right like this right here and cut this out in a in a scroll saw. See, I just I just scroll sawed around this entire thing. I mean, I suppose you could use a router and a thicker board, but it's easier just to take two different boards, scroll saw the one, and this is a piece of uh, I think yeah quarter inch ID vinyl tubing from the hardware store. It's real basic stuff you can get every day, and this is some aluminum tubing I had laying around that I just. Well, I have a, a metal lathe, so I was able to trim that down. But it's not really necessary; you can just sand the end of it. And I went ahead and saw this, and then sanded it down, made it look a little bit presentable, and just took some uh, wire brads and nailed everything down. And this down here is just a, a big fender washer with a screw going through the back, a machine screw. It's just a big fender washer, and that keeps this tubing from popping out. The same thing up here too, I put this bridge across here to keep the tubing from popping out and when it does that it compresses those tubes onto those aluminum uh, port outlets, whatever you want to call them, and then you just hook your tubes onto that. So if you want to build one of these, it's uh, I'm eventually going to put it right up on my website on how to build one of these in case you're interested you can go there and read more about it and I'll have conversion factors there and everything. So. Alright, I just wanted to show you guys that. I hope you enjoyed it.